Plumes by Georgia Douglas Johnson was written in 1927 and produced at Chicago's Cube Theater and the Harlem Experimental Theater. Langston Hughes loved the play, declared it one of the best little plays I've seen, um, and it won prizes at the time. It focuses on two black women, Charity and her friend, Tildy. And the stakes are very high for Charity in the play. She's a mother who faces a heroin choice, uh, whether to spend this large sum of money that she saved up, $50, uh, on an operation that might save her daughter's life but is, is a risky gamble, um, or whether to spend, save it and spend it on her daughter's funeral to ha give her a big grand send off with horses with feathers on their heads, which is where the title Plumes comes from. Charity's close friend Tildy comes over to help her in this really difficult moment. Um, and they see a funeral and we hear the funeral procession going by for another person out the window. And they, um, they, they are really, you know, in, the, in a dark and harrowing time in, in their lives. Um, it gives them a sense of hope um, to see this funeral go by. Uh, to be able to honor her daughter's life. Um, so here's a little bit of a scene with the doctor and the, you can notice the ways that he's trying to um, maybe coerce um, Charity into paying him for the operation. I, I think the doctor may be white, a white character, but I'm not sure how he was originally cast. Um, Charity and Tildy are black and their language is written in a dialect. So the doctor, Dr. Scott says, well, Mrs. Brown, I've decided I have to operate. Charity says, my Lord, doctor, don't say that. It's the only chance. You mean she'll get well if you do? No, I can't say that. It's just a chance, a last chance. And I'll do just what I said, cut the price of the operation down to $50. I'm willing to do that for you. Charity throws up her hands in dismay. And she tells the doctor how her friend Tildy read her coffee grounds to say that the operation won't be worth it. Sort of told her fortune through the coffee grounds. And Dr. Scott says, my, my good woman, you don't believe in such sense, don't you believe in such, such senseless things that cup of grounds can't show you anything. Wash them out and forget it. Charity says she can't forget it, that she believes that she would be spending the money for nothing. But you won't though, you'll have a clear conscience You'd know that you did everything you could. I just can't see how I can have this operation. You say you can't promise. Nothing? I didn't think you'd hesitate about it. I imagine your love for your child. I do love my child. My God, I do love my child. You don't understand. But, but can't I have a little time to think about it, doctor? It means so much to her and me. So one of the things that really inspires me as a playwright reading Georgia Douglas Johnson's work um, is the deep specificity and naturalism um, that she's using in the play to have us empathize with charity and the choice that she has to make. She uses, uh, you know, dialect. She uses this, this um, the, the five senses beautifully so that we have this really rich world that we're living in that goes beyond even the walls of the room that we see. Um, you know, the use of an uh, offstage unseen character and her daughter who we can hear suffering in the other room. The sounds that we hear of horses passing by um, and Charity and Tildy's descriptions of what they see um, and the plumes. Uh, and the details of their activities in the space, uh, sewing, washing, making coffee, they all work together to paint this very vivid picture of uh, you know, three-dimensional black characters, uh, black female characters, um, a central world so specific to them and to their life in this moment in time. And it's a really dramatic um, uh, question that in its specificity, I think, becomes universal and, and um, we can empathize with it, which is very inspiring to me and I think just leaps off the page when you read it. I hope you enjoy Plumes by Georgia Douglas Johnson.